Hey friends, my name is Miss Charlie and I'm a librarian at the Columbus Public Library. Today we're going to be talking about books that are going to be coming up for the next Helen Ruffin Reading Bull competition. Ooh, ah, ee. So I know that things were a little bit odd um, at the end of the school year. Um, not typical when it comes to getting set up for the Helen Ruff Reading Bowl. Maybe you weren't able to get the books that you needed from your media specialist at your school library so that you could read over the summer. Do not despair, friends, because I have a solution for you. The public library has all 10 of the Helen Ruffin Reading of Old Books that are on the Georgia Children's Book Awards. We have all of them at the library. We have many copies of them at the library. And you can go and check out all of them from the library for free. And you can read them all summer long to get a head start on the Helen Ruffin Reading Bowl competition. So, you know, summer is going to feel really long this year, considering, um, you know, the time that we were working at home throughout the spring semester, but it's never too early to start reading these books. And you know what else is really, really cool? Not only can you go and do curbside pickup at the public library to get the physical copies, which are nice and cleaned and they've been quarantined, no germs on them. A lot of beautiful new copies, actually. I think this one's brand new. Look at that. Ooh, nice. Not only that, if you don't want to read a physical copy or leave your home, totally understand that. You don't have to. You can get a public library card for free, a digital one, by going to our website at cvlga.org, and you can sign up for a digital library card. And with that, you can download ebooks of the Helen Ruffin reading books. You can download the ebooks. You can download the ebooks and you can download it instantly. You can read it from your computer. You can read it from your smartphone. You can read it from an iPad or a Kindle. These are all available digitally for you to download through ebook so you can read them from the comfort of your home or you can go to the library and get a physical copy. That's pretty awesome. I mean, Wow, that's actually kind of cool. And not only that, but uh, upcoming in the fall, we're gonna be planning some more programs to help prepare everyone through the public library to um, really learn these books to, to come up for the Helen Ruffin Reading Bowl. Uh, we did something similar um, this past January leading up to the competition where we held sessions at the public library that anyone could come and join and we talked about all 10 of the books and we actually did a mock type Helen Ruffin Reading Bowl that anyone could come and join in and we asked questions. Um, and some of these questions ended up being questions that were used in the Helen Ruffin Reading Bowl. Not that we know that. We just go through, we read them, we compile questions, and we share them with you. Um, so if you're interested in um, doing a book club or coming um, to the library for our programs um, coming up in the fall at the end of this year, um, we're going to be doing lots of stuff to help prepare all of you to have access to these books, read them, do book clubs, and learn some questions that might be asked to get prepared. So this first book that I'm holding up here, this book is called Solving for M and it's by Jennifer Swinder and it is, oh, it's an excellent book friends. If you have not read this yet, this might be um, one of the books that you should get started reading. So I'm just gonna go over this really quickly with you. Um, obviously I can't read the whole book to you, but I want you to get familiar with it. I always like to read the back and the inside cover first, right? So let's read the inside cover so we can find out what this is about. It says, I thought fifth grade at the middle school was gonna make perfect sense, but now I'm not so sure. Besides writing poems and science and following the no drawing rule in art, we have to keep a journal in math. Wait, you have to keep a journal in math, girl, mm-mm. Our teacher, Mr. Van, says that a math journal is a place to tackle challenging problems and process deep thinking. And all I know is that it's a place where I can draw. Hmm. When Mika's neat life starts getting messy, she realizes that there are no easy answers and maybe Mr. Van is actually onto something. Maybe a math journal can help you work out your problems. 
and not just the math ones. And, and maybe when you have help from friends and family and, you know, one unique teacher, it's okay that life's not nearly as predictable as numbers. This is a debut novel by Jennifer Swinder. That means that she is new to writing and publishing books. Hey, congrats, man. That's great. So we have this debut novel by Jennifer Swinder. And it just brings about Mika's journal to life in this perfect equation of honesty plus hope that adds up to a heartwarming coming-of-age story. So what we have here is some nice... Realistic fiction, that is the genre here. What is realistic fiction? I mean, it just means this is something that could happen in real life. This is totally based in reality in our world. Um, this could be someone that's in your class, this could be you. Let's see, this book, it's not too long actually, um, especially when you see inside, there are some handy dandy illustrations. I, I kind of like that because it breaks up the monotony of, you know, a bunch of words on the page. Um, so actually, it's kind of nice. Like, it actually shows illustrations of her journal. That is kind of cool. So the book's not very long. It looks like it is about 239 pages. So honestly, I, you could knock this out in a few days. I think this is a really easy read. Um, just to kind of get you immersed in it a little, because I, I know it might take a while to get a hold of these copies. Um, I know a lot of the media centers only have so many to go around. You have to share with the rest of the kids on the team, and that's that's harp in the summertime and also germs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the first chapter for you so that you can kind of get your feet wet. And if you really, really like this, um, at the end we'll show you how you can place a hold to uh, get in line to pick up this book from the library. Uh, we sanitize it, it's all nice and clean. You can drive up to the library and pick it up, curbside service, germ-free, and take this book home and you'll have two weeks with it, which I think is uh, pretty cool. And you know, if, if you don't want a physical copy, that's fine too. At the end, I can also show you how you can digitally check it out and read it on your tablet, on your device, on your phone, on your computer, um, which is awesome. Honestly, that, that I like reading that way because it helps. I like to read a lot at night in my bed on my iPad, and it just is super cool doing it that way. So here we go. Uh, we're going to read the first chapter, Solving for M, and you can decide for yourself if this is something that you want to read to help prepare for the Helen Ruffin Reading Bowl. <coughs> here we go. It says right here, unit one, estimation. Fifth grade at middle school should make perfect sense. Elementary school's first grade, second grade, third grade, and fourth. Okay, I know I'm leaving out kindergarten, but stick with me for a second. And then middle school is fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. High school is ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Oh, that's interesting. That's a little bit different than how we have it here in Muskogee County School District, but all right. But now, on the first day, I'm just not so sure that everything is nice and logical. First of all, we have to keep a journal. In, in math? Well, Dan P. raises his hand. Aren't journals supposed to be for language arts? He asks with a smirk. Or goppy kids that want to be poets? Dan, we all know someone like that in our class. I know Dan well. He was in my class last year. Mr. Van, the math teacher, he, he doesn't say anything as he writes on our board. Bring in spiral notebook for your math journal. This step is mandatory. Oof, mandatory, what does that mean? It means it's required. You don't have a choice, you have to do it. And then he turns back around the class with a very dramatic flourish. Mr. Van reminds me of some kind of wacky magician. A cape on top, uh, a cape and top hat would not seem entirely out of the question. I know some math teachers like that too. He wears these thick glasses that make his eyes look very big and very far away at the same time. And he's left-handed, which means he can write on the board with his left hand as he erases the board with his right. The letter looks, the letters look like they're running to fill up the newly emptied space. 
I'm not exactly sure why we need a math journal, but it's not the kind of question I'm going to raise my hand and ask in the first day of middle school. Of course. So I'll, I'll leave that to Dan. Why do we need a math journal? Dan calls out. Well, keeping a math journal will help us transparently tackle innovative problems, Mr. Van begins. Keeping a math journal will let us embark on reflective discussions of relevant math issues. He underlines math journal on the board every single time he says it. Keeping a math journal will help allow us to explore, justify, argue, wonder. <sighs> well, okay then. I guess that's why you need a math journal. Mr. Van seems very excited by the whole idea. I bet when Mr. Van was in fifth grade, he kept a math journal without even being asked to. Maybe he even invented a math journal. It's not that I have anything against math. I'm just not much of a math person. It doesn't seem like something to get that excited about. I mean, numbers are numbers, right? My mom says that she likes numbers because you always know what you're going to get with them. She's an accountant though, so I guess she would know. And it's not that I have anything against journals either. I have like 20 blank books at home. Some are full and some are empty and some have pages torn out and some have pages stuffed in. But those are for my art, not for math. Keeping a journal will allow us to dare to color outside the lines. Mr. Van adds, and then he spins back around and he writes something else on the board. It says, bring in colored pencils and or markers for your math journal. This step is optional. Hmm. I guess he wasn't kidding about the coloring part. And I can get excited about anything that involves colored pencils or markers, drawing, doodling, sketching. I can do horses really well and I'm pretty good at people too. I have a book that shows how to draw things in a certain number of steps. You just follow the directions and everything turns out just the way it's supposed to. What do we need colored pencils for? Dan asks. Patience, please, my dear Watson, Mr. Van says. Then he opens the top drawer of his desk and he takes out a box of matches. I'm half expecting him to light a pipe, but instead he reaches into his drawer again and he takes out what looks like a white tea candle. Is he allowed to have candles and matches in school? I I'm pretty sure that's got to be against the middle school rules. Mr. Van dramatically strikes the match on the box and he lights the candle. Remember, dear thinkers, he says, math may be exact. And then he blows the candle, pops it into his mouth, and he eats it but life is mostly estimation. All right, we're gonna stop right there. And so now you've got your feet wet with this book, Solving for M. Again, it's a realistic fiction. It's by a first time new coming debut author. Her name is Jennifer Swinder, which of course is the first thing that you wanna memorize with these books. Who's the author? Jennifer Swinder. Uh, and this is realistic fiction. And I think it's, it's a beautiful book and again it's not very long there are illustrations um, in it I think it's kind of cool um, if you really like this and you want to check it out go to our website at cvlga.org or you can type in Columbus Public Library Georgia and it should be the first link that pops up on Google and what you can do is go to the catalog and reserve it uh, if you don't have a library card and you, or you don't want to go in person to pick up a physical copy, you can go to our website, the same website, and you can immediately sign up and get a digital library card, which I think is super cool. You can use that to check out the digital ebook copies and read them immediately at home. Um, so go to the website cvlga.org and be sure to reserve it and read it this summer because this is going to be one of the 10 books for Helen Ruffin Reading Bowl. All right, friends, my name is Miss Charlie. Thank you for joining me today. Bye.
are springing into summer learning at the Chattahoochee Valley Libraries, and the program you just attended is one of the ways you can earn completions. Just go to cvlga.org and look for Spring into Summer Learning. You can register yourself and your family online, and then start reading and attending our online events. That's all you have to do. We're giving away weekly gift certificates, and every completion you make enters you into a grand prize drawing for tablets, games, gifts, and more. Remember, you have to register to win. CVLGA.org, and we'll see you online again real soon.